Myself, Greg Seabury, Rockless Chairman, Shane Nagashev, and uh, Ben Chinisi. Uh, with us at this meeting is uh, Corporation Counsel Les Pinter, uh, Director of Finance, or Deputy Director Dan Garrett, uh, Director of Planning uh, Dennis Elkin, Director of Economic Development Wayne Shepherd, uh, Mayor Mark Bowden, uh, Petitioner and uh, uh, Paul Scalzo, Ted Haddad, Mr. Claude Priolet. Priolet. Close. Yep. That's good. Paul Gaber and ex officio members are Councilman uh, Joe Cabo and Councilman Bobby Arcanti. Did I miss anybody? If I did, just ring in now. <laughs> members of the public. <laughs> John's always here. <laughs> Poor guy. Yeah. And he doesn't have to be here. Um, all right. Before we begin anything, I think that it'd be prudent to turn it over to the mayor here and, and ask him for his input as to. Um, the progress that's taking place thus far, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, Mr. Seabury, and uh, thanks everybody for being here tonight. And I just want to let you know, I, I didn't get my tan for these guys. I was breaking the leaves over the weekend, so uh, cleaning the yard finally. But anyways, um, this uh, is the uh, commonly referred to as the 13 acres on the west side as part of the uh, land that was given to the city uh, for the reserve uh, development. As you know, the reserve has uh, slowed down uh, markedly in the, their process of development, and a lot of that's a reflection of the current economic state. Uh, WCI filed for uh, Chapter 11, uh, the reorganization. They've since come out of, or close to coming out of uh, reorganization, but they're, they're, the project's not going to go as fast as we had anticipated because the market can't absorb the units, and, and uh, folks are just having a hard time economically. Um, so just to give you some context of where this land, this piece of land, uh, to give you some history on it, was initially slated to be a minor league baseball stadium uh, during the long negotiations with um, uh, the folks at WCI. Uh, actually, it was a previous ours before WCI. Um, they had agreed to put a, base, a minor league baseball stadium on the site. Um, later on, during the process of negotiations, uh, when WCI came into picture, they said, look, why don't we just give you 10 million bucks for the baseball stadium? We'll give you the land. If you want to build it, you can build it. If you want to keep the money, you can keep the money. And we're sort of out of the whole baseball stadium uh, scenario. And part of that was because WCI just doesn't do it. They didn't have any experience doing that kind of construction, and they just didn't want to deal with it. Um, from that point, we uh, took ownership of the property through a quick uh, for, through a, a deed uh, uh, sign over, and um, there were some discussions with a development group that talked about putting a multi-purpose uh, facility on that site uh, that was going to be a hockey arena, you know, an indoor arena, um, and park related parking there. And if you remember, the council voted to give them about 16 months to study whether or not they were going to do that project. Um, eventually, they ran the they ran the economics that just didn't make economic sense for them. And the property's been um, pretty much uh, sitting there uh, uh, un undeveloped. Uh, in the same process, I, we had begun discussions with uh, Mr. Foley's group relating to uh, looking at the property a little bit different. One, looking at a less intensive use than a stadium would provide in terms of traffic and all the, the, the headaches that, that go with that. 
Uh, and number two, uh, for the city's perspective, we wanted to, to, to derive some rateables. We wanted to be able to get some tax revenue back into the city, as well as provide some kind of lifestyle amenity uh, and center there. At the same time, as you know, Danbury sort of become a uh, popular place to do a lot of filming. Uh, we had a nice run with uh, uh, film that we, we rented out the Emanuel Luton School. Uh, and so we began actively looking for a flex space for the city to be able to lease out to a production company that would, would come to Danbury uh, to do their film. Since that time we began doing this, almost 18 months ago, uh, the film industry is uh, under strike, the writer is a writer's strike, I think there's an actor's strike too, I can't figure out who's on strike, but everybody's on strike, so a lot of the actual production has slowed down, but we anticipate those issues being resolved and film production will pick up again. Uh, and so we, uh, uh, Mr. Foley sort of approached me with this idea, uh, I said, well, let's go one better, uh, let's uh, have a flex flexible space for the city, about 5,000 square feet that we could lease on a short-term basis to a prospective production company that could store all their equipment, do their post-production there, just like they did over at the Manuelton School, uh, but it would be more of a modern facility. They could move the walls around with dividers and set it up the way they want. Mr. Foley has agreed uh, to build a 400-seat uh, theater that would be uh, for independent films. This is not a Sony Cineplex, uh, let's run 10 films at once. That's not the uh, intention here. This is for uh, independent films. Um, that would be first run, uh, and that would be uh, shown, or, or uh, they would use this facility as a showcase for their particular product. I mean, the ultimate goal would be that you would have a film made in Danbury and then shown in the theater. I mean, and have a debut and have a red carpet and the whole thing. That would be the goal at some point. We're not obviously there yet, but that would be kind of a neat twist to, to, to this whole development. Uh, the theater would be run by Jacob Burns, which also runs a similar kind of theater in Pleasantville, New York. Um, they would be the operations people. Uh, they're not building it, Mr. Foley, correct me if I'm wrong. No, we're, we're building it for them. Yeah. We're building Mr. it for Mr. Foley's building the uh, theater, but then Jacob Burns would enter an agreement to actually run the theater on a daily basis. And I would strongly, I know Wayne has been down to check out their facility as well as take a samples from my office. And I would strongly encourage any member of the council that wants to go down and check it out, let me know and we can. We can yeah, we'd be glad to arrange a tour of their facilities and, you know, glad to show whoever wants to go. We, we'll make arrangements and show you their theater, give you an idea of their, you know, their programming and their back office operation. They also have built, we were uh, uh, involved in the original development of the Jacob Burns Film Center in Pleasantville, which, just to give you a little history, was the, where it's housed now was originally one of the first uh, motion picture, um, you know, theaters in, in Westchester County. Uh, I guess it was, it opened around 1916, 1920, something like that. Uh, because it was a single screen theater, it lasted into man, late 70s, early 80s, and then it was lo no longer economically viable. They shut it down. It couldn't compete with the multiplexes, you know, the multi screen theaters. It sat there, and I may be giving it, stop me if I'm giving more information than is necessary, but I'm giving a little history of the. Um, the uh, a guy by the name of Steve Apcon, who is a retired Goldman Sachs partner lives in Pleasantville, about a block, two blocks from where we own a lot of commercial property right near the theater and have developed and are redeveloping a lot of commercial property right near the theater. He lives in a residential area about two blocks away. He had been walking by this theater for years and now he had retired from Goldman Sachs, this is seven, eight years ago, and had some money, had some time on his hands and was looking for a new challenge and was always fascinated with the film industry and films and so on. Um, he inquired, found out the, that the property was available, uh, went to us, we gave an initial large contribution, founding contribution to, to the theater and helped them with it as far as the planning and construction, budgeting and design and all that. And uh, basically pulled off the total renovation and expansion to a two theater, a two screen independent theater, which has been usually successful. They do, they show independent films, they uh, do various Genre, genre type festivals, you know, it might be Italian films one week where they show. They do a horror festival that's very. Uh, do they? Yeah. Oh, yeah I'm not a horror guy. So. It's a big time deal. And they also, through his connection, Steve has a lot of strong connections in Hollywood. They'll also uh, preview full first run films also. They might get, like, they got Angels and Demons before any of the theaters got Angel De Angels and Demons. And uh, they had Dan Brown there who wrote. Angels of Demons and Da Vinci Code and all that. Uh, and they have several stars come in and they'll do cocktail parties and they'll do meet and greets and they'll 
show the film and they'll have questions and, and answers after. So it's 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 really become through Steve's work, it's really become hugely successful. It's a nationally uh, known film center. And uh, we've been talking for the last couple of years about where it might be appropriate for them to expand. They didn't want to be too close to where they are now. They didn't want to compete with themselves or cannibalize themselves. So they felt this was kind of an area up here that was far enough away and it was an opportunity to basically expand their footprint. And uh, so we felt this was a great location for it and an appropriate anchor for some kind of mixed-use lifestyle center. There's also, uh, uh, and so in order to support the, the obviously the film center and the production facility as well as the theater, um, you, you know, there are related uh, boutique stores that would be there. Mm -hmm. uh, there would be no box stores. The largest, I think, footprint would be, per se, a, a Whole Foods or... A yeah, Whole Foods type operation would be the only large retail store. The rest of them would be <coughs> boutique type retail uses. Right, retail uses. And uh, there would be a small, uh, like a gazebo for outdoor performances to accommodate, you know, a soloist and maybe 100 people or 50 people. Or it wouldn't be a, a, you know, it wouldn't be a compete with an Ive Center or something like that. Um, and the idea here would be that uh, a couple things is one is eventually uh, we'd like to link this facility uh, with the film festival on Main Street so that there'd be a lot of synergy between the two. I don't think the two are separate. I think the two can work very well together and I don't think we lose anything on Main Street uh, uh, by, by having this facility in Danbury. I think we can enhance the festival. Um, as it is now, most of the major awards for the festival were done at the Amber Room so it's not like you're doing those part on Main Street. We would still keep Main Street as a focal point for all the small productions or whatever but you might be able to do a big rollout of a, of a big film that we can attract here with this kind of facility to be a capstone or a cornerstone or, of the event. Um, so we think it's a way to open up the whole city for the festival long term as well. Um, so uh, that's pretty much where we're at now in terms of what, what, what does a deal look like. Um, we've made a lot of discussions. One of the things we've talked about, which I think was in the proposal, was um, a uh, $2.5 million property, uh, right, what we're calling a property development rights agreement, uh, which would allow use of the property for 10 years and then enter a lease agreement beyond that as some certain, uh, with the, you know, your CPIs and all that other stuff that goes in there to, oh, for the next 50 years or 60 years. Obviously, there's a significant investment of money here, um, so you can't do like a 20-year lease and then say, no, by the way, you're all done. Um, um, so that would, uh, in terms of that, full taxes, there's no deferrals that we're offering, no tax breaks or anything like that, unless the state wants to come in and drop something in on us. Other than that, we're not actively doing that. Um, we will anticipate creating a number of jobs, and we can probably get a, num a figure for you on that, both in the construction of the facility as well as the ac actually working there between the, the boutique stores, the theater, et cetera. So it's job creation. Um, and finally, the, the last leg of this, the last piece, was that uh, in our initial discussions, we'd like to use this payment at some point, whether it's in this budget or future budgets, to leverage the acquisition of about 200 acres across the street. That would be the old um, Back of Beyond property um, that's owned by Hank Greenberg. And we've been in discussions with Mr. Greenberg about sale. We're very close on a number. Uh, so we would leverage some of this 13 acres funding to go out and purchase about 190 acres of open space literally across the street. So any resident in that area that's concerned, well, we're, we're giving up some of our open space. The reality is we're going to use this money to leverage uh, a bigger uh, piece of open space that will have hiking trails. And we're actually going to link this up with the town of Southeast. So you'll be able to cross the border and go back to the New York Times is writing a piece on this in the next couple of weeks. So it's a really win win for everybody. Danbury gets to expand its open space inventory. We get development, we get jobs, we get to enhance the film industry in Danbury. We get uh, rateables to our tax base, which I'm sure Dan will uh, chip in we need. Um, and uh, we also <coughs> are able to uh, provide uh, a, a nice linkage with the um, film festival. So that's kind of where we are, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Foley does have, I think, some, some renderings and some drawings, and I'm not sure exactly if you want to have them go ahead and, and dive right into Might it. Might as well. Yeah, yeah, if yeah, you want to. Pictures like the thousand words, right? Yeah. And these are preliminary and subject to change, it's fair to say. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, also our uh, planning staff has to review them. Uh, this is to give you a concept. Conceptual, yeah. yeah. This is this is to give you an idea of the architectural style of the look of the building. I don't know how to where should I put this. Right here. Up there? Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. The idea is this is this is a view of the main boulevard. Um, the idea is that we're looking to do a 
New England village type concept. Okay. Um, you know, uh, that basically is you go there maybe to see a movie, you might have something to eat before you go see the movie, you might have something to eat afterwards, you might do a little shopping before or after. It's not a place where you drive in, you spend five minutes or ten minutes, you get back in your car and leave. It's not it's a place where you want to what well, it's what's more commonly called these days a lifestyle center. Lifestyle type cultural center. And uh, you know the we feel it all. There's going to be a good synergy between all the uses. Uh, between you know, you might go in, you might do some shopping after the movie. Uh, you know, at a gift shop or buy a bottle of wine or something. Um, and uh, like I said, might get something before or after the movie. Um, In the summertime, there's a small gazebo that yeah, be which would be good there. for French soldiers. Let's, let's say the high school had a string quartet that wanted to do a little recital or whatever on a Thursday evening during the summer. You know, appropriate for maybe 50 or 100 people watching, not hundreds. Just a small type. You know, uh, give you know local groups and everything opportunity to perform and so on. And, and uh, so this is. You know, it's it's like I said, a New England style cedar shakes, uh, stucco, and so on. Um, a lot of brick pathways, landscape, you know, situation, boulevards, and so on. Uh, you can walk through most of the entire uh, development without basically, except for crossing the streets. This is all; these are all covered walkways. These are all second floors hang, you know, overhanging first floors, so you can walk around the project without getting wet in, in you know, in rainy weather and so on. Um, just to give you an idea of the site plan. Mr. Like. Foley, just out of curiosity, do you have a time frame on this? ASAP. <laughs> yeah, we'd like to go forward. To, you know, we're ready to go forward. Is I mean, how long will it take to build on this? I would say it's an 18-month project to build it. Approximately, might be a little sooner, or a little, you know, plus or minus three or four months. Um, the theater is ready to go. Um, obviously, the rehearsals. Yeah, you know, we're calling rehearsal studio space, which would be for the city. Would you know be built in conjunction with the theater, Mr. Chairman? Um, just about that, Wayne. When you were down there, there was a school that was there, was there not? A ta across the street, they have an education facility. That's one thing. Paul uh, knows they have a very good relationship with Case University through the Jacob Burns Center, as we would have with Western Connecticut State University, and also trying to link some educational components to space available within your your facility here, so that we can develop that as educa our educational mission mission as well. They do a lot of programs with schools in conjunction with schools um, in the theater, and they've also built down the street. And you never know this might follow depending. On the success, you know, the success of the theater, they built, which we could arrange a, a tour for also for anyone else to go out. About a block away, uh, Steve raised another twenty million dollars and built a what they call a media arts lab, where they actually the theaters show the movies, the media arts lab produces the movies. They actually have film production in there, animation production, uh, do different you know educational programs for college level students, high school level students, and uh, they have also they bought a a house next to, next to the Media Arts Lab where they have a director in residence. A director will come there, a famous director will come there, stay for a month, and work with people on producing films locally. So, um, yeah, for those of you who have an idea where the site is, Bridgebury Road here, Reserve Road here, this is where you make the right into the WCI project. Um, and these are basically the playing fields or whatever. Okay. Um, Yet we're, we're uh, proposing the entrance to be approximately where it is now. And the view that you see on this plan here is basically standing here and looking this way down at this building. This is this this is this building right here, the front of this building right here. So that would be a view looking down this boulevard. Um, the theater uh, and the studio space would be over here uh, in one building. So it would be, you know, it'd be easily accessible. Uh, the natural foods market would be down here. And like I said, this is a mixture of basically boutique retail in these buildings here. Um, and this would be a parking structure to take overflow when, when the theater is particularly busy. Uh, generally what happens is, the way this would work is, most people that come in here for other uses in the theater would be coming in during the day. Uh, some would come in the evening maybe to get something to do, something like that. Um, the theater does things during the day on weekends, but more in the evening during the week, in the evening or weekend. So, so um, I'm sorry, I'm trying up here. I'm just, so my voice is running out. Um, but we put in, like I said, a parking structure for that overflow. 
We have about 600 parking spaces proposed in the project. <coughs> Sorry. Now, this I just want to emphasize, I don't think Dennis has seen, you've, you've seen the concept, but I don't think you've actually seen these drawings. These are just to give you a sense of what it was. The last one I saw. And we'll have any suggestions and so on. And comments yeah. on no, this is just our no. similar. Uh, what we think about what okay. I have looked similar. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and you notice there's no curb cuts on uh, Older Strader Road. Okay. And where's the property you want to save this? Um, it's um, that's Rich Berry Road, so it would be to the. Uh, the other one up. I'll put the other one up. So oh, I'm sorry. Right. Put that up for a second. Sorry. There's Rich Berry Road. It's on the other yeah, side. Yeah, Rich Berry Road would be here, right? It'd be, it's on the other side of 84, uh, where the hill is, the new hill, uh -huh. uh, where the uh, our pond is. It's Farrington's pond. Right? Yeah. By the Farrington It was Farrington piece. piece. Yeah. Now it's uh, it's been back up beyond its AIG for the last uh, about seven eight years. Where the swamps are. There's it's the headwaters for the Still River. That's where the Still River starts. But it's about uh, he's got about 300 acres there. Southeast is going to purchase uh, the portion that abuts up to ours, and we're working on a hiking trail that will go from roughly uh, the hill and for the hill and all the way across like state line, loop around and come back. About a total of about so 400 acres. But the idea would be that we would leverage this to, to do that. Okay, let's. Do you gentlemen have anything more right now, or just open up to questions? Yeah, for me. <coughs> gentlemen, do you have anything to throw up here yet? Can you read Sure. I do have several questions um, to the chair. The actual Realty Equities Group. Mm -hmm. Can we get a background on who they are? I don't know. Who yeah, we can get your resume if that's would be helpful. Sure, absolutely. Okay. Um, can I continue? Yeah. As it's, as it's, I did that when my questions come out. The total acreage is the full 13 acres? Yeah, there are some wetlands there, though. So that's yeah. But the whole lease would be the full 13 acres. The whole site is, yes, we're proposing that, yeah. would be property rights. But yes. Yes, so we we're talking about the whole, yes, the entire site, which is 13.125 yeah. 13 acres. Right, since the mayor mentioned this is not a lease. I'll go back here. It says term of lease, 99 years. I know it's a, it's a, it's a, it's the first cut at what an agreement would look like. That is not the agreement. We're not asking it to approve that tonight. You know, we want to get the concept out there. We've got a little bit of work to do. Um, the basic, the you know, the core opponents of that are, are, are what we're looking to do. Uh, but we probably will end up calling it uh, property rights. Uh, but it'll be agreement that allows use of the property. And then after 10 years, we'll probably have a lease that'll kick in at some certain per year. Which but eventually we'll turn it to a lease yeah, at some point. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So again, this is so we get it all out. Since at some point it will turn into a lease, now this public act 07 to 18, which required a public hearing, this would also would qualify for that. Sure. So at some point this would have to go to a public hearing. Correct. Before this whole thing is... Well, actually, you could you could agree to do it and go to the council, but you, but you can't execute the contracts until you actually do a public hearing. For okay. So the public will have their input at some point before the city signs off. Well, it's got to go to zoning. The whole thing. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else on this whole thing? No. <laughs> um, I have a lot of land use issues, but I would I would um, hold well, off. Well, we got Dennis this. here, so we'll do it right away if you want. Um, well, again, there's something is I, I, it would be traffic issues. It would be a concern. Noise, parking, that whole issue. Cause figuring where this piece is, it's going up the hill. It's sitting above where everything else is. So noise could be an issue, especially with WCI being right next to it. And because uh, what kind of noise would you anticipate coming out of there? Well, I, I, I don't know, but figuring, I mean, as cars go in and out, I don't know what the you know noise is always an issue. Um, traffic would be an issue. Well, I'm just keep giving them out as people talk to me on this proposal. I'm just putting them on the table. Um, as far as getting through the chair, um, a market analysis on the piece in general. Has the city done anything, as some type of analysis of what else can the city use this property for? 
Um, we have had discussions internally about how best to, to utilize the piece. I think at this point our, our goal is to get the, the, the best use and the best dollar value out of it for the taxpayers. Um, by, uh, by and large, after the 16 months that it had cleared, um, this project really came to fruition and we, and we thought it really was the best the best use of it. You could certainly turn it into housing, but of course if you turn it into housing, you generate noise and traffic and everything you already articulated. In addition, you don't have as good rateables in terms of taxation purposes. <coughs> so um, we really thought commercial use that creates jobs in this economy would be the best highest use of the property. And then, and both of the the civic center proposal and the uh, the baseball stadium would have been would have been traffic generators. Where this will be a spread out traffic. It's not going to be a one flush of, of cars coming in. It's going to be a throughout the day situation. Exactly. Mm -hmm. no. Let me just throw this in, uh, Councilman. <coughs> Looking at this, uh, I, I understand your concern about the traffic, but the parking. I mean, it's all. It looks like a ample parking there, and and as was fully saying, there are people going to be using it during the day sporadically and then be leaving or coming at night and that type of thing. So I, I appreciate your traffic concern. in and out yeah. down that road. But now I get a ball game. That's right. the marriage part. And the before, I'll just be for my last question is before I turn it back over. Um, now when they built WCI, one of their proposals is to have a village like this. Mm -hmm. Is that still in the plan or is that going to contradict this? Um, I don't I'm not aware. It's that. still part of their master plan. But it's it a different kind of development. development. That's small scale village center, primarily for the residents of the reserve. This is not. This is not. Even one an example would be, um, you know, they might have a facility to drop your shirts off at <coughs> WCI, where here they may have a Talbots. It's two different concepts, so they won't be competing with each other. Yeah, but when, when, I, when I was on that EIC commission when he did this, when, when I spoke to the developer, he did mention having a Starbucks and things at a larger scale besides just catering to the residents. Right. He was also going to open it up to cater to the surrounding. There's square footage. Yeah, I mean, I think the only, what is the square footage limited. of each facility to like a thousand square feet? I think they were only proof of 30,000. Like, they talked about a dry cleaner, a bar bar barber shop, or something to service the people who live there. Nothing of any real size. But the PMD only allowed those small uses and in size, basically. I would, Mr. Chairman, inject that the chances of you seeing that constructed any time in our lifetime are probably. Uh, <laughs> well, it's, it's, a, it's a good question, but I think that. Wait, hold on, please, Mr. Oh. Unfortunately. Yeah. Things change. Um, Mr. Scalp, I think you're going off for something. Um, my, it was a good question. My last uh, point was I think that WCI would view this more as a benefit to their, to their residents versus a competition. The, uh, the master plan of the uh, of WCI, which controls the development, and in which is right there, and uh, you know would have to be changed through the commission if, if there's any change in uses. But to the previous point you raised, that master plan uh, indicates that the surrounds the surrounding uh, properties to this property are, are mostly of a commercial use, being uh, office, office, hotel things of that nature versus residential. Most of the residential is well west of this property near Sawmill Road, uh, which is which is under construction now. So it's, uh, you know, probably a couple hundred acres uh, west of this piece. So in this area, on the other side of Reserve Road is, is commercial for office development. And beyond that, I think it's a great deal of open space. Wow. I, I'm, not, I'm not studying it directly. And across the street, of course, is the existing office building that was initially built to service uh, the banking facility and the real estate office. Would the CI have to approve this? No. 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 I may interject. Mr. Hoffman, it's a pleasure to hear from you again. Since we're discussing land use. Absolutely. Um, first of all, I wouldn't sit here and try to do a site plan review at this time. Okay, I think that's a foolish waste of time. Um, I did 
receive a plan that was similar to this. It appears as though you've made some refinements, but it's basically the same. Um, I don't see a problem with Old Ridgebury Road. We're coming right off of exit two from 84. Easy on, easy off, <laughs> as they say. Um, the, as far as noise is concerned, um, if you follow the master plan for the reserve directly to the west of this is an area that is designated for office use. You don't get into housing until a minimum of over 500 feet away. Okay, And between that and the office development is open space wooded areas. So I don't see that as a real problem. Um, Again, as far as traffic is concerned, that really should be something that the traffic engineer should look at. Uh, this committee cannot do that. You are not qualified to do that. Well, Oops. Brad, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, you looked right at me when you said that, too. No, I was actually looking at Baron. <laughs> uh, my only concern, twofold. One, this should be rezoned CA 80 because it's not part of the reserve. It's not a planned neighborhood development. Presented CA80, and it clears up a lot of issues. I mean, we miss a lot of issues. If we, otherwise, we would have to go through in trying to shoehorn <coughs> this into something that really doesn't belong in, and that's the PND regulations. Okay. Um, and and presumably, if this is going to be at least it's got to do with the planning commission at some point, they're reviewing comment. But uh, uh, otherwise, I uh, I don't have any objections at this plan. I mean, we may find little things here and there on site plan review, but conceptually, it looks sound to me. Does the Bridge Bay Road all CA80 like Bill Plain Road anyway? Across the street. Across the street CA80 and also Bill Plain is all CA80. Yeah. <coughs> so it's, it's, it's building across the street is it's his own CA80. So. There's some IL-40 in there too, right? To There's the a little IL where the... Uh, but I mean, it's not like it's the Chicago Zone. There's no, no CA80 in the right. church. there, I can see it. That's no, that's no plan. Well, it's clear that we have uh, for homework to do yet. Councilman, do you have anything? Yes, uh, through the chair, <clears throat> maybe to uh, Corporation Council or maybe to the mayor. Uh, or, uh, or to finance. The difference between just, again, maybe put into layman terms, um, the difference between the, the property rights, um, agreement versus a lease agreement. I think it's all just how, uh, through you, Mr. Chair, it's all just how you, how you classify it for us uh, based on our accounting uh, methods. It's, it's, it's essential, all practical purposes will allow for the use of the property for, you know, for the length of the term of the agreement, and that's all it really is. If it doesn't make a bigger difference, and if after the 10-year period you want to re revert back and call it a lease, you certainly can do that, too. Uh, we've done this similarly with things like uh, Olive Garden, uh, Red Lobster, um, Airstat Biddle properties out there by the airport, uh, not uncommon within the city to uh, to do these kinds of agreements. And uh, you know, just want to emphasize again uh, how critical economic development is right now for the city and how important these jobs are, uh, both the construction as well as the actual permanent uh, jobs within the facilities. But it's all a matter of how you account for that. Anything further? Just an action? No. <coughs> I'm, I'm, I'm happy to assume this is going to be a table meeting. It's going to continue. I would assume so, yes. Um, but I do think, I think it was the mayor had a good suggestion. We, I think we should tour the facility. And like to do that. I think it's yeah. good. One dimension all isn't one. Mr. Pedro, I just want to Mr. Chairman, the only thing I'd be concerned about was if we have three. Um, of, this, of the ad hoc, and that constitutes a quorum of the ad hoc, and it would be a violation of, of the Freedom of Information Act. So, perhaps what we do is pair each of the members of the committee with another council person. So, I don't know if like, Paul wants to go down. Uh, and, and, and as long as we don't have a majority of the council there, we'll try to pack in as many people who want to go. We'll put it out to everybody. Whoever wants to go, they can go. Maybe just break it into two separate 
uh, trips down and, and kind of like what we did with the train. Or we can find an interstate exception somehow. Yeah. Going, going across state lines, maybe it'll work something out. <laughs> 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 I, I know that uh, Wayne uh, was uh, very impressed yes. with the facility, and uh, as was Ted. Maybe you see again a different perspective. Yeah. And then I'd like to make a motion. Well, Mr. Shane, so real, real quick, you, you, this summer, you know, sometime in the next three or four weeks, is good for everybody. July's kind of hurting. August, early August, we do that then? Just make it out the next week, tomorrow night meeting, just make it out there, we can try to schedule it through your office. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd like to make a motion, for, at least for the next ad hoc meeting we have, that we can have some type of draft agreement available so we can take a look at. Unless you and Mr. Bailey can work on that? Sure. We can, we can hash out those terms. Yeah, and so you can make a motion to continue this meeting. Maybe a motion to continue. Okay. And yes, um, there's really, we've got two tracks going on here, Mr. Chairman. We have the, the agreement that are we have purview over. Um, but we also got a zoning track. Um, so I, I think, uh, you know, we're asking Mr. Foley to invest some money here in the, in the zoning process. <laughs> I don't want to spend his money, Teddy. I, I talked to Paul about this, and Paul thinks the zoning, he might mention to the mayor, Paul, what we talked about today, about the zoning coming before the council thing about Marsh. It doesn't seem to be that the property should be uh, an application to, to change the zone, if in fact the council doesn't approve this, the, uh, the, the, the process. I mean, we're, we're at the chicken or egg. That's my that's my concern here. Yeah, so, so yeah, I guess how about I'll this? In the interim, why doesn't Mr. Jaber get with Mr. Alpern and they can sit down and kind of noodle how to, how to best proceed with the zoning side, so that Mr. Foley doesn't uh, put through an undue expense running through right, zoning if the right. council's not apt to go forward with the agreement. But conversely, if the council goes forward, we're we're ready to go. I think if the zoning feels comfortable that that the council is. Accepted this, they'd be more apt to feel more comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. When you have 200 people, no, when the zoning first. Yeah. Well, we've always had problems doing zoning without agreements with other people, doing it on other people's property without well, an problem. agreement. Yeah. Problem. So well, problem. you'd have to, you'd have to consent to us doing it. So I think I don't care about that. Proposal that for a zone change. <coughs> that would answer all the questions. Yeah, we can do the zone change. Yeah, if you would do it, that would answer all the questions. If I may, why don't we? Because you don't want her to do a bunch of conversations. Wait, she's not able to get all this stuff down. What are we talking about currently? Because it's going to take several months to just to get through that process, and you'll be you can go ahead on the lease agreement. Um, in the meantime, it's going to take several months to get through the whole zoning process. All right, so <coughs> now they're going to have to do that anyway. It's presuming your risk is a couple hundred dollars in a half a field. <coughs> Okay, here's what I still think, Mr. Chairman, and Mr. CDC is amenable that we get Mr. Jaber and Mr. Elford together to figure out the best path. Yeah, for this track. Track. Yeah, yeah, track. Track. And let's focus in on the oh, facility, uh, visiting the site, so people get a nice tour, understand what we're trying to do here, and, and then the uh, final agreement. Are you all right, Tim? Yes. Yes. So, would you uh, take back your motion? No, he's got it. Oh, he's got it. It's a motion. It's a motion to table. Yes. Uh, not table. Continue. continue. Motion to continue. Yes. 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 Next meeting, we will also have a draft document <laughs> for the ad hoc review. And in the meantime, the planning, planning and zoning could get with the applicant to review the zoning, the IC issues, planning issues that need to go. And any uh, council members that to be to this mayor's office. The motion has been made on the floor. Second. It is now second. Um, <coughs> Is there any discussion on that, Jim? It's only us. <laughs> Seeing now, I'll try your minds all in favor of the motion. Are we saying aye? Aye. 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 Not opposed. Um, at this point in time, I see no further business tonight. I just committed. Motion to adjourn. Except for I'll accept a motion to adjourn <laughs> and have it second. <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.